Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 58th episode of Vision Con Live, your go-to nerdy talk show. I'm your host, Zach Wilson, being come here to see me today, UK, to meet the woman of the hour. She's Rindo from Food Wars, Moroha from Yashihime, Yoshiko from Love Live, just to name a few. She's the singing and acting connoisseur here to hang with us on this special Friday night episode of Vision Con Live. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the one, the only, Morgan Berry. Morgan, how are we doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I, you know, that has never actually happened before. I usually get it all in one take. <laughs> uh, but there was like, right as I started, there was like three different notifications messing up. And I was like, oh, oh God, oh God. But <laughs> we got through it though. But Morgan, we got a lot to talk about. So we'll go ahead and just jump right into it. So Morgan, I listed just three of your many roles that you have done throughout your career so far. But I wanted to start us off with, how did we get here? Was showbiz always the plan? Or did something happen kind of later in life that brought us to where we are today? Show business was kind of always the plan. <laughs> I started off as just a, a singer. And I, I've been acting for about 17 years now. Um, a lot of on stage, a bit of on camera, and I've been singing my entire life. And I always knew I wanted to be in the performing arts and I just wanted to do it all. <laughs> and how I stumbled into voiceover was I won a voiceover competition. And yeah, it's crazy because I had never done voiceover in my entire life at that point. I had just been an actor on stage and on camera and that's it, never done voice acting. And so I, I competed in the contest and the prize, if you won the competition, was an audition at Funimation Entertainment. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so I won. <laughs> and that's how I got my first audition at Funimation. And uh, then I just, they kept sending me auditions, calling me in for more auditions. And I, I started booking and here I am. <laughs> So do you find, did you find that your background in singing and stage performing kind of gave you maybe an edge compared to maybe some of the other competitors in your voice acting, in that voice acting competition, and then maybe later now in your voice acting career? Because acting, voice acting, I mean, they're two sides of the same coin. Yes. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that my singing uh, experience contributed to, uh, I mean, there are some roles that you won't book unless you can sing. There are some characters that ha have to sing and that actor is required to be able to sing in order to book that character. And so it's definitely come in handy. It also helps with my breath support and musicality and the booth and you know acting wise. And so, yeah, being musical definitely does help. <laughs> well, I mentioned this kind of earlier, but real quick before we get started, guys, plenty of you have already messaged VisionCon directly or Put in the live chat your viewers' comments and questions. If you're watching this live on Facebook, you still have plenty of time to do so. I just wanted to remind you about that before we get into the meat of it, which, so I mentioned at the very top, three important characters out of your vast array of characters you've voiced throughout the years. The first one I wanted to talk to was a recent addition to one of my fa new favorite animes. That, of course, is Food Wars. So I want to talk about everybody's favorite redhead, the one, the only, Rindo. So before we kind of dive deeper into it, I just want to know a brief overview of the character, maybe any fun anecdotes involved with getting the part, anything at all. Um, I, I actually didn't get to audition for this role. Um, I was autocast, which sometimes happens, you know, um, in this industry. And I was glad I got this role though, because she is so much fun. I didn't know what I was really getting into when I, <laughs> when I got into the booth, but I remember um, I had watched Food Wars, well, just one episode before, <laughs> uh, before getting cast in this. And I remember thinking to myself like, whoa. It's different. <laughs> you know, they take a bite out of this delicious looking food and then, whoa. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Like my first viewing of the show, I was like, what is this? What's going on? <laughs> so when I got cast in the show, I was like, oh, am I going to have to do scenes like that? <laughs> yeah. Rindo, um, my experience being her is, she's so cute. Oh my God, look at her. Just, <laughs> she is fun and she's 
sexy and she's so ambitious and I think that's one of the things many of the things I love most about her character she's just she's so cool and ambitious and just fun (laughs) (laughs) and she's actually very naturally carefree and you know jovial compared to a lot of her other competitors that are a lot more serious but so is there really anything about her personality that you maybe relate to on a personal level you know either good or bad well i mean the fact that she's so just so gosh dang cheerful (laughs) in everything she does honestly i i really admire that about her and i love it Uh, As far as relating to her, I feel like I'm more grumpy. (laughs) Like, I don't know. It's a hard act act to follow. Yeah, I like, I'm not a morning person. (laughs) But as far as relating to her, I would say (laughs) she dislikes doing paperwork. Same. Yeah. (laughs) And um, traveling, love traveling. I'd say that those are some good... uh, some things I can relate to with her. Very good trait. Now, can you cook as well as her? Oh, no. (laughs) I can't. I did a food war uh, event thing on camera like a few months ago where I had to make food. It did not go well. No. (laughs) It really did. It was bad. Well, for this next character, I feel for our our younger viewers and listeners, I feel like I need to do a brief history lesson. So there was an anime, ladies and gentlemen, that came out that was largely revered as an instant classic, not only for its you know prestige, but also for the fact that it kind of led the path to creating the big popularity jump in the anime genre here in the West. And that anime was called Inuyasha. And so finally, after years of it being over, the beloved sequel was announced. And so for the next character I want to talk about, I want to talk about Moroa from Yashahime. So like we just did with Rindo, just give us a brief overview, any fun anecdotes involved with getting the part, anything at all. Oh my gosh. Moroha is so much fun. Honestly, she's both Moroha and Yoshiko, or Yohane, they're two of my favorite characters I've mm-hmm. ever played before. And Moroha is so, you know, she's my most recent character. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so my experience booking her. I didn't think I was going to get it. I oh. really didn't. I, here's the thing. I didn't grow up with the show. I, I watched it way later on. Um, when I got the audition for it, for Moroha specifically, I actually wasn't given any of the other characters to audition for. It was just Moroha. It wasn't Setsuna or Toa. And the thing is, normally I'm kind of, I fit more in the range of Toa and Setsuna. So I was surprised that they gave me Moroha to audition for and not the other two girls. I was like, oh, I'm not going (laughs) to book this because I'm more of a fit for the other girls and they didn't let me read for them. So I really didn't think I was going to book it. I really didn't because she's a young girl. They don't usually cast me as the young peppy girl because I have, because of the texture in my voice and the fact that I do have a lower register, they'd never really give me the chance to voice for characters like this. And so I auditioned, right? I sent in my audition. I did not, I didn't expect anything. I really didn't. Really? I, I didn't expect it. To, I, a few weeks passed and I was just like, see, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I blew it. And then I got an email saying, hey, congrats you've got a callback for this character. And I was wow. like, I was like, a callback? No, I was looking at my phone, just looking at that email, just going, no, I didn't. Stop messing with me. Stop <laughs> lying to me. Like, nah. It's some elaborate scam email. Yeah. I had binged through the entire series though. Like at that point, uh, when I got the audition, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this justice. You know, I'm going to audition, going to do my best. And if I book this role, I'm going to be ready. I didn't think I was going to book it, but I like, I'm, I'm go big or go home. Like I'm going to go all out. And so I binged the entire series, every episode, every movie. And, you know, I did my audition and I got that call back and I was like, what? No. <laughs> well, you earned it. I mean, you binged the entire show, which it's not a short show by any means. Not. And the movies. No, yeah, no, you, you. Practically all day. I would watch episode after episode when I wasn't working 
And then I, I, I did my callback. I, they gave me a little bit of instruction and I was like, okay, okay. And so I re-recorded and this wasn't a short audition. This audition was the longest I've ever done. Wow. Normally some auditions can range from like three lines to three scenes. This one had like multiple scenes, like a lot of scenes to dub and we, you know, matching to picture as well. Mm. Uh, so it was a lot. It was a definitely one of the bigger auditions I've ever worked on. And so I, I sent in my, my callback audition and I was like, I'm not going to get it. Sure. I got a callback, but I'm not going to book this. Sure. And then I don't know, maybe a month went by. I don't know. It was a while. It felt like forever. Weeks sure. went by. And I was just like, literally, I was sitting on my couch and I was like, see, nothing, nothing. I knew it. I knew it. And then I look at my phone. The and notification. I, my just went, <laughs> like I got, I got the email and I hadn't even opened it yet. I saw it and it said, congratulations. And I was like, no. No. <laughs> I clicked it. I said, congratulations. You've been cast as Motoha. And I was like, what the? Oh my God. Like I stood from my couch and I was like, oh my God. And no one else was in the house except for him. There was a guy who was doing construction on our walls. <laughs> He's like scraping away at the wall. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I turned around and look at him and go, oh my God. And he's like. Freaking showing him the email. <laughs> I was just like, huh. Because I can't say what it is. It's NDA. Sure, naturally NDA and whatnot. But. And so I'm just freaking out with this guy going, are you okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> At least the guy was a sweetheart. <laughs> I was freaking out because I really didn't think I was going to book it, but I did. And I love the character so much. So I'm super grateful that I booked it. Well, and like, I guess it's not surprising that it had such a long and in-depth, you know, casting process, because like I said up top, Inuyasha, one of the most impactful and beloved animes ever, and so, and that goes, you know, doubly so with this long-awaited sequel series, so when you did finally found out, after you calmed down and maybe sat back on the couch, was there ever a point where the pressure may have, you know, kind of dawned on you that you really needed to knock this out of the park because, People have been waiting for this series for years. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, it's really intimidating. But honestly, they booked me because I was right for the role. I have the texture. It, it matches to Inuyasha's texture. So it's, I realize, okay, I guess it is kind of fitting. I guess I can see why they cast me in this role now, you know? And But of course, no matter how suited for the role you are, there's, there's going to be people out there that don't like it. And so, of course, never read the comments. Don't look at the comments. You're going to be disappointed. You know, there were some comments that are like, oh, I just wish that there was more texture. She needs to go look deeper in her range. And then there's another comment right under that says, no, she, she needs to go higher in her range. Like, she doesn't like, she needs to go higher because this is a young character. Like, such conflicting. What do you want? What do you want from me? What do you want? Deeper? <laughs> higher? I don't know. Uh, why don't you get? Why don't you come out and you do it? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm the one that booked the role, so sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna do my dang best. Yeah, I mean, just you know, professional directors, you know, hired you. you know, whatever. <laughs> like, oh my gosh! Like this whole process of auditioning for this for the series was intense. So they worked really hard to find the right people. Yeah, and you were just that right people. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last character I wanted to talk about. Um, now, a little bit of a background, you know, speaking of backgrounds, so if you just look at mine, you know, you guys can obviously see, you know, I'm a big fan of shonen anime, you know, guilty as charged. However, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm a big fan of the Love Live series, as a matter of fact. I just love how happy and jovial it is. It's definitely a stark contrast from shonen and other more darker series. And just at the base level, the music is a bop from start to finish. So I wanted to talk about everybody's favorite, or at least should be favorite, Yoshiko. Yes. So again, before we dive deep, just give us a brief overview of the character, getting the part, anything at all. Oh, this, I recorded for her years ago, so I wish I could remember specific moments in the booth. I wish I could at this point, but it's just been so long. But as far as the character herself, I adore her. She is one of my favorites. I love her split persona. 
this Chunibio vibe. I love it. And I feel like I can relate. <laughs> I just, oh, I just get so emotional. <laughs> she, oh, I love the message that she embodies, you know, like her episode, uh, when she, you know, joins the band, joins the group, that message was, you know, be your shining self. Don't let other people tell you not to be who you are. Be who you want to be. And that's a beautiful message. Like, heck, <laughs> she was putting her costumes and stuff away in, in, in a box. And she's like, this is how it should be. And she like pushed, you know, she was going to throw it out, put it away forever. But then her friends are like, no, nah, just do it. Just be your shining self. And she's like, okay, <laughs> like, oh, the feather exchange and just that scene. Oh. Like, oh my God. It's just precious and sweet. And oh, just, I love the supportiveness, the friendship. And oh, she is just such a light. And she was so much fun to voice for. She was, oh my gosh, switching from the quirky voice to the, hello, my fellow little demons. <laughs> just going back and forth between those two was so fun as an actor that was a blast it, it was it wasn't hard switching back and forth it was actually i don't know for what for whatever reason it was fairly easy for me i don't know it well, was see, like, and that's kind of why yoshiko is so complex and you know they're all very interesting and sweet in their own regards but i find that yoshiko or yohane uh is just very you know, just interesting and has a lot of depth to her because of that split persona. So as an actress and voicing her, was that a fun kind of challenge to do, having to kind of swap between the two, sometimes in rapid succession? I mean, at first, getting used to it was a bit of a challenge, but the more I did it, the easier it got. And there was, you know, we would, we would watch the scene, we would preview it and be like, okay, she's sometimes in the middle of a sentence, she switches. Mm -hmm. So we would underline, all right, this is her Yoshiko voice. Okay, now she's going into her demon voice. <laughs> I, I love that, her, her other persona. Like we would like write it in the, in the script or, you know, underline certain parts of it. Uh, this means she's quirky this means she's demon like switching back and forth just so that we could get it right just like it was in the original Japanese and so that's how we did it and it became pretty easy to switch back and forth <laughs> well and that anime has a lot to do with music something you are no stranger to so I wanted to jump ship real quick guys because I wanted to explore a little bit about that so let me put on the screen real quick so not only are you a famous and talented actress, you are also a very accomplished musician. So I wanted to ask, you know, you said that you kind of started with music. And so I wanted to ask, how does that kind of fallen through and kind of stayed with you through your career as an actress as well? And are there any kind of lines that blur between your acting and your singing, case in point, some of your song covers? Yeah, there have been some characters where I had to sing, uh, for example, Show by Rock. And because the director knew I could sing, that was one of the main reasons they were able to cast me in the show is uh, they're like, well, we need someone who can sing on a professional level. Morgan, she's a, good, she's a great person to go to. Let's add her to the cast. So that was great. It's uh, because of my history with music, I was able to, um, yeah able to book a few roles here and there that involved music. I have two uh, different names I go by. Morgan Berry, which is where I produce original songs and parody songs. And then there's the Unknown Songbird. That's the name I go by when I do song covers. I do a lot of song covers from anime titles. One of my most well-known is being Unravel from Tokyo Ghoul. I, what I do is I adapt the lyrics from Japanese to English, and then I sing it in English, the whole song, not just the TV size version, the whole thing. And that took off nicely. And so you can find my song covers under the name, The Unknown Songbird. And you can find my originals and my parody songs under Morgan Berry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would, I would argue, yeah, it has it kicked off well. What is that, like 4.4 million plays? <laughs> 
And so, guys, I have a bunch of links in the live chat. If you're watching this live on Facebook or if you're watching this later on YouTube, we've got all those in the description box below, plus extra ones, which on that note, guys, if you guys haven't already messaged VisionCon directly your viewers' comments and questions or put in the live chat, this is your last chance to do so because, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the plug zone. Morgan Berry, now is your opportunity to plug, promote, advertise, whatever verb you want to use, anything you want, the floor is yours. Cool, plug zone, cool. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at the Morgan Berry. Um, feel free to check out Yashahime, please check it out. It's, it's a lot of fun, and especially if you're an in Inuyasha fan, like from years ago, definitely check out Yashahime and follow us along on that journey because I am super excited about it. Ah! <laughs> well, and so something that the public has kind of missed a lot about conventions is autograph signings and you know maybe personal video shout outs. Well, you've remedied that on your website by offering both. So you want to just real quick, wanted to explore a couple of them. There's a lot of very pretty prints and then of course the video and just kind of voice recordings. So kind of tell the people that aren't able to watch this on video, so listening now on Spotify, kind of how they can take advantage of that, some of the prints that are available and all of that. Yeah, well, you can find this store through my website, um, themorganberry.com. There's a tab that says store, you just click on that and then it's got a bunch of links to one of them being to my autograph store where you can purchase any autographed print. I will sign it and send it your way. And I can also do video shout outs and live video calls, like a little meet and greets through, through video virtually, because you know, during this pandemic, we're missing out on a lot, you know, there's no conventions really going on. And so I kind of remedied that by having those options. And then right here at the very bottom of your musical endeavors. So when people donate to that, what are they exactly donating to? Making music is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, oh, so those instrumentals that I have made for my song covers, they're not cheap. <laughs> and so in order to put out more song covers, I need the funds to actually pay the guy who makes the instrumentals for me. He's really cool. And then of course the guy who mixes the audio for me because I'm not a I'm not a pro with mixing I have to hire an engineer for that so the guy who mixed the instrumentals the guy who mixes the audio I have to pay them somehow so yeah and then I just I do the lyrics myself and the vocals myself but I of course need help from other people I don't play instruments and I don't mix audio like a pro nah so I have to hire people for that and so that's where the money goes towards and guys, I've got all those links in the description box below if you're watching this later on YouTube or if you're watching this live on Facebook, got them right in the live chat. And with that, we're going out of the plug zone and going to our final segment, viewers' comments and questions. So like I usually do, guys, just gonna split it 50-50 between the messenger and the live chat. And unfortunately, I ran out of contact solution, so I'm blind as a bat right now, so I'm gonna lean in real quick to read your guys' comments. So Chris, uh, did you say What's going on? Weird seeing you guys on a Friday. Yeah, I just, for a scheduling thing, we decided to do it on Friday, Chris. Uh, okay, so and then Aaron tuned in and said, Hiya, Morgan. Which Disney descendant would Mora want to hang out with? Uh, Mal, daughter of Maleficent and Hades, then son of Belle and Beast, or Evie, evil queen's daughter? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, the first name that came to my mind was Maleficent, so I don't know. There you go. I don't know why, but I, do, I just think that'd be really cool. <laughs> okay, so uh, Caroline tuned in and said, hey, Morgan, besides acting and singing, what are some of your favorite hobbies? Okay, so I don't have a lot of hobbies outside of work because I love acting and singing, and that's what I do for a job. So uh, what I do to wind down, or I guess what I do on my free time, Mm -hmm. I read fan fiction. Do you really? Uh, you, my girlfriend and you would get along then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read so much fan fiction. Guys, okay. So I didn't realize this. Uh, the, uh, the Safari app on iOS has a limit of 500 tabs. Really? Yeah. You want to know how I know that? Go on. Because 
all 500 tabs on my phone are fan fiction. No. Yes. And I added, I added another, I tried to add another one. It's just something that I'm like, oh, I'll read this later. I didn't think to make a, a notepad with links. No, I just have them open in tabs. Sure. And so I, I opened up one, like I tried to open up a 500 tab or whatever. And they were like, you, you want to delete all these apps? Uh, <laughs> apps. What's on my mind? <laughs> would you like to delete all these apps and I was like mm, or these uh tabs oh my yeah. god I can't talk <laughs> these tabs and I was like no what and it said there's a limit and I was like why is there a limit ah and so I had to like read through some delete them so I can make more room for more fan fiction well and we don't need a character blank x reader but just out of curiosity is there a certain fandom or show that you like most yes <laughs> I love Voltron. I love Heck it. yeah. Yes, Voltron Legendary yeah. Defender, to be specific. And my ships, my ship should have been canon. It should have. Absolutely. Uh, I, I will forever be upset about that. Clance is canon king, okay? And, <laughs> oh, I was wasn't going to say it, but thank you for specifying. Yes, and that last season gutted me. Okay, oh it gutted me. <laughs> they oh my did my characters. My favorite character, they did him dirty. I was just like, no. Don't oh. get me don't get me started. We'll be here all night. <laughs> okay, so um Jasmine tuned in and said, I want to know how Morgan feels about Hatsuru from Yun from Fruit Basket. Oh, Hatsuru! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so excited when I got cast as him because I love, I love Hatsuharu. He's, I kind of always had a crush on this character actually because I always thought he was really good looking and I'm just like, oh, I love him. And then I got cast as a little Hatsuharu and I was like, oh, no way, dream come true. <laughs> so that was cool. I grew up reading the, the Fruits Basket manga. So to be in the new Fruits Basket was such a huge honor for me. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we got time for about two or three more. So Chris tuned in and said, hey, Morgan, what was it like voicing Ichiro Hiko in The Boy and the Beast? That is one of my favorite anime movies of all time. Oh, I was really excited when I, when I got that one, too, actually. It's a beautiful movie. Oh, my gosh. I love voicing for boys, too. It's just, it's a lot of fun, and I feel like it comes more naturally to me because I have a deeper register. I love that character so much. I even have his little hat. I have the boar hat. And it's, it's too big for my head though, so I don't wear it, but I have it. And I remember going to the theater to watch the dub and just sitting in the, in the audience being like, oh my gosh, that's me. What? That was like my premiere, really. That was the first time I could hear myself in a theater. You know, that was pretty wow. surreal. Very and surreal. The end credits started rolling. And I was just like, oh, that's my name. <laughs> that's me. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like, it was, I'm really honored. It's funny be because uh, last weekend we had John Swayze, who was Kumatetsu in yeah. Boy and the Beast. And it killed me that we ran out of time that we couldn't talk about him. Because I agree, that is one of the best anime films of all time. Yes. Ugh. All right, so, da, da, da. so Jenna tuned in just said that she loved you as uh, Morwa. You're amazing. Oh, thank you. I love Moroha so much. She's so much fun. All right, and then lastly, we're going to go to my boy Ricardo, who said, if you could download any skills Matrix style, what skills would you like to have? Define Matrix style. I believe, now it's been a hot minute since I've watched Matrix, but I think you can just like, download any skill like let's say case in point you could be better at cooking that could be one so oh. of the three of three any three skills what would they be like if i could download any skill mm. any three skills like bean bam boom you're fluent at russian or bean bam boom you can cook great i wow oh Whoa. okay i want to be an expert in martial arts hell yeah that'd be pretty rad you know self-defense um, I think another one, I would love to be able to just go into any dialect, any accent that I want. I, I don't know if that would, 
if I would have to choose those one at a time, like, oh, I want to be, you know, great at this accent. And then my next one, oh, great at this accent. I just, I don't know. It'd be really cool. I want to be able to break into a perfect Irish accent or something. I think that'd be really neat. But, oh, as far as languages, Japanese. I would love to know Japanese. Thank you. Yeah, because I want to go to Japan one day. Because, oh, gosh, I love Japanese food. Yes. And just... It also looks like a beautiful place, and I would love to experience the food and the beauty. I really want to go one day. Oh, my God. My, my girlfriend went on a two-week um, study abroad thing to Japan, brought back so much food, gorged ourselves for days. Oh, it was so delicious. Yum. Oh. Any. But with that, guys, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 58 of VisionCom Live. Now, before we wrap things up, Morgan Berry, are there any final thoughts to leave us on? Words of wisdom, sage-like advice, anything at all? Um, wear a mask and, uh, you know, treat others with care and love. Be thoughtful of others, please. And uh, do your best to keep yourself safe and healthy and others safe and healthy, please. Couldn't say it better myself. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 58 of VisionCon Live. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, of course, am your host, Zach Wilson, but much more importantly, this has been my very special guest, Morgan Berry. Make sure to check out all the links down in the description box below, guys. And until next time, always remember that life's better when you have friends to share it with.